Greetings, and welcome to Lesson 6. You may have been wondering when we would create our first game. With this lesson, we will create a simple game called the Balloon Pop App. This is a game all about risk and rewards, where you have a balloon, and you pump it up one pump at a time, and as the balloon gets bigger and bigger, you get more points for each additional pump. However, you run the risk of the balloon popping and losing all the points that you've earned. In this lesson, we will use variables and a random number generator in App Inventor to create random numbers. In this app, we're going to do something a little different. In screen one, under properties, set the background color to black. For this app, we're using what is called reverse contrast. We will have white text against a black background, which is the opposite of what you'd normally expect, which is black text on a white background, thus is referred to as reverse contrast. Next, I will add a label, which will serve as our title. I will make it bold, make it 20 size, change the text to balloon pop app, and change the color to white. Now I'm going to add a horizontal arrangement. In that horizontal arrangement, I want three labels. The first of these labels is going to be my score label. The second is going to be a spacer. And the third will be my score value label. With the first label, I'm going to make it bold. I'll leave the size at 14. Of course, I'm going to make it white. And I'm going to change the text to score. My second label, I'm going to increase the width to say 80 pixels and delete the text since it will merely be a spacer. And then for the third label, I'm going to make it bold. I'll leave it the same size. I'm going to change the text to zero because this is going to be the overall score and when the app begins you will want that to begin at zero and i'm going to set the text alignment to right so that it will appear to the far right of the label and finally i will change the color of the text to white now I will go to drawing and animation and pull a canvas over onto the screen. I want it to fill most of the screen, but not all of it. So I will set the height to 300, which I know works well on my device, but you'll need to check this and adjust for the size of the display on your device. The width I will make fill parent. I will change the background color to white. Now, from drawing an animation, I'm going to pull a ball over. And this is going to serve as my balloon. I'll place it about midway in the screen. Make this my balloon. 
sprite. And I'll give it an interesting color. Let's say magenta. Next, we'll go to layout and pull over a, another horizontal arrangement to put at the bottom. This one, I'm going to set the width to fill parent so it goes all the way across the screen. In that horizontal arrangement, I'm going to put a button. I'm going to put a label. And I'm going to put a second button. Now, my first button is going to be the pump button. My label is going to be a spacer. And my third button is going to be my reset button. The way the game will work is each time you press the pump button, the balloon will get a little larger. And if you reach the point where you feel like you've gotten all the points you want from that round and you don't want to lose your points, you can do reset. So in our pump button, let's change the text to pump. In our reset button, let's change the text to reset. Now, for our spacer, what we want to do is to increase the width of our spacer so that our two buttons are as close to the edges, or at least opposite edges of the display, as we can achieve. This is what is referred to as separation. Frequently with apps where you have two functions, say buttons, and you don't want to have the risk of confusing them, a person presses one button when they mean to press the other, you put some separation between those buttons so it's less likely that they will confuse them. The other thing that separation does is for a game of this nature, it allows the person to play it with two thumbs. So for the spacer, we want to play with this to get it right for our display. But I'm going to start out with, say, 180 pixels and see how that looks. Of course, I need to get rid of the text. And that, I'm going to add just a tad bit, and I'm going to say that is probably as good as I am going to get it. 190, yes, 190 is perfect for my display. Now, we have one more step, and we're going to pull one last button over and put it at the bottom. This button is going to be our restart button. And the thought here is as you're playing, you may reach a point where you want to quit the game and start over. Or you might also have a friend that wants to play, so you hit restart, kill your score, and let your friend start over from zero. So the one thing we will do with this button is we will change the text to restart. To begin, we'll go to variables and we'll get the initialized global block. This creates a new variable that is a global variable, meaning it applies all throughout the program. And we'll give it a name, which will be limit. And the way it works in the game is there is a limit so that when the size of the balloon reaches that limit, it pops. Now, we want that to be a variable so that on any round, the player doesn't know what that limit actually is. We'll go to math, and we want to generate a random number. So we'll get the random integer block and plug that in. And what this does is it will generate a random number between 1 and 100 that will now be the limit for how large the balloon can get before it pops.
And one last thing is the small value here. Let's increase that because when the game starts, the balloon will be at a size 5. And we want the player to make a few pumps before they have to worry about it beginning to explode. So let's make this value 20. And so now what will happen is it will create a random number between 20 and 100. And then that will be the value of the limit, at least for this round of the game. We need to add two more variables. We'll get initialize global. This is a global variable. And the name for this one will be score. This will be the total score a player has for a given game. And from math, we will get a zero and start the player out at zero points. The second variable, again, initialize global. We're going to name this one gain. And we will start it at zero points. And the way that the program will work is that each time you pump the balloon, you get points added immediately to your overall score. Now, for a given round, those pumps are tracked, or at least the points you get for those pumps are tracked. And that is what our gain variable is doing. It is the number of points earned in a given round. Now, since you get the points immediately, if you pop the balloon, the number of points in the gain variable will be subtracted from your overall score. However, in contrast, if you reset before you actually pop, then you get to keep your points. So the gain variable is keeping track of how many points we need to deduct if a player pops the balloon. Now let's program the pump button. So we will get an event handler for the pump button, the when click button. And the first thing we want to do is with each pump, increase the radius of the ball, or in this case, our balloon. So we'll go to the balloon sprite. And toward the bottom, you will get a block that says set radius. Let's get that, plug that in. That is going to set the radius of the ball or how big around it is. Now let's go to math. Let's get a addition block. Plug the addition block in. And on one side, let's get the current size of the ball or balloon, whichever we prefer to call it. So we'll see here, we get the, um, this is a pointer to this uh, radius for the uh, ball. So we plug that in. And now let's go to math and get a number block. Plug that in. And we will have it increase the size by five with each pump. Let's next increase the score with each pump. So we'll go to variables, we'll get a set block, plug that in, and with our set block, let's select our score variable, and we'll want a addition math block, and we'll get a pointer to our current score. And what we will do here is let's go to our balloon and let's get a pointer to the current radius and put that in so that what we're doing is with each pump, you take the current radius of the ball and increase it by that number so that as the balloon or ball gets bigger and bigger, you get more points for each additional pump. We just increased our score by the radius of the balloon. Now let's do the same thing for our gain variable. It'll be just like what we did before, except this time we're setting the value for the gain variable. And in fact, let's use the same math block except 
instead of score now, it will be the gain that we're increasing. We next want to increase the score that is displayed. And to do that, we will go to the label for the score and we will get a set text block. Plug that in. And then we will go to variables and get a pointer. And in this case, we're going to direct that pointer to our score value so that this block will replace the text for the score value with whatever the current score is. Let's next work on what happens when the balloon pops. We need to have what is referred to as a conditional. And in this case, it's an if then conditional. So in the control blocks, you notice the first one in the list is the if then block. Plug that in. And for the if side of the conditional, let's get a math block. And we want a math comparison. So let's get the math comparison. And we're going to ask, is the radius greater than the limit variable that has been set where the balloon should pop? We'll go to our ball and get a pointer to the radius. Change our comparison to a greater than. And we will go to our variables and get a pointer to our limit variable. For the then side, so in other words, what happens when you pop the balloon? Let's first reset the radius of our ball. So from the ball or balloon sprite, we will set the radius, get a block to set the radius. And let's take it back to the original value, which should be five. We'll plug a math block in and make that five. Now, let's next update the score. So we will get the set block for the score. And keep in mind what's been happening with each pump, the score went up. Now what we want to do is to subtract the score by how much gain there was. We'll get a subtraction block. And we want to subtract the current score, so we will do a pointer to the current score. And we will get a second pointer. And this will be to our gain value. Now let's set the gain back to zero so that we're ready for our next round. So we will get a set block, make it our gain, and we will get a math block and make it zero. Now, before we go on, let's give us some more working space here. We want to update the score value that is displayed. So we'll go to our score value label and get the set text block, plug that in, and then attach a pointer to our current score. And the last thing we need to do is to reset our limits so that in the next round, the limit at which the balloon pops will be a new value. From the variables, another set block. Set this to our limit variable. Now, just like what we did originally, we'll get a random number block and set the low value to 20. 
So that takes care of the pump button. Now let's work on the reset button. There again, we need a wind click event handler. First thing we want to do is to reset the radius of our ball. So for our balloon sprite, we will get the set radius. Take it back to the original position. And recall what's happening here is instead of taking a chance on another pump and popping the balloon, you're saying, I'm just going to go back to the beginning, take the points I got, and start a new round. So we'll put it back to our original size, which was 5. Now we need to reset the gain so that the person will not lose those points if they do a reset. And the gain should be 0 now for the next round. And then lastly, we need a new limit. So we will go to set, get another set block, make it our limit, and save a step or two. I'm going to copy and paste the last random integer block I used. And now we will get a new limit. We're almost done. Let's get our restart button. Again, a wing click event handler. First thing we want to do is when a player says, I want to start a whole new game, is to reset the score. So make it zero to begin. We want to change the value that's displayed for the score. So for the score value, we will grab the set text and insert a pointer to our current score, which we just made zero. We want to reset the size of our balloon. Make that five. And finally, reset our gain and our limit variables. And I'm going to take a small shortcut here. Oh, actually, I made a small mistake there. That should not be zero. That should be our random integer. I presume you've had a chance now to test your game and to play a few rounds. There are a couple of things you might do now. One is to change the values that we used in the game and see how that affects how you play the game. So in other words, what is the maximum limit, for example? Or what is the gain in size? Or how much do you lose when you pop the balloon? Also, think about other situations in life that involve similar risky decisions. And you can take and customize this game, tailor it in one way or another with images or whatever, so that it becomes a simulation of other risk decisions that people make in life. For more lessons, or to written notes to go with this lesson, go to the Brain Hackers website at www.brainhackers.net.